discuss the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita. We have completed uh, chapter 1. And uh, I will give you the little feedback that chapter 1 we discussed karma and dharma, these two words. Dharma is the value system on which this creation is working. And karma is what we do. What we do if it is based upon dharma, that karma is the best. But we must know how to do it, how to do it. So that is that we discussed. Today we are touching the peripheral value of chapter 2. And the wisdom of chapter 2 is that we are not the bodies, we are living in the bodies. And this is a very important concept to understand and digest at our own level. It is not a scary thought, it is the awareness. So, Bhagavad Gita says that the outer frame, which we call a body, we are not that. We are living in it. So, this distinction is very important to digest. Because most of the time in our life, we have identified ourselves with the body. People talk to our body and we react. If somebody says, Kapoor Sahib, you are very good, he is talking to my body and I become happy. After 10 minutes he says, you are useless. And now the cycle is reversed. Now I am angry, sad. So it is all body. But if I know that I am not the body, then this interaction will not affect me. I will be more at peace. I will be more divine in my way of thinking. So how to digest this thought? That, that is the core message. So I have written here, right here. And our bodies are made of five gross elements. It is the fire, earth, water, air and ether. These are the five gross elements. And when we die, these five elements we have to return from where they belong to. So the body perishes and these elements go wherever they belong to. We go to the cremation, we do certain rites and these five elements disappear. Then there are three subtle elements. And that is mind, intellect and ego. These are the three subtle elements. Mind, intellect and ego, these three we should and must understand how they work. Because they are subtle. You have no evidence to touch it, either of them. So, mind, mind is a subtle organ in our body whose function is to produce thoughts. It's a thought producing machine. At any given time, we are producing millions of thoughts, different types of thoughts. Distance is not a problem for the mind. You can sitting here, you can think of the moon, the star, the galaxies, the space. You, are, you can talk through your mind to your relatives in India, anywhere in the world. Now the world has become global. So you, through your mind, the mind, because it's a thought-producing machine, you can produce any type and all types of thoughts. So that is the main function of the mind. Now, we produce so many thoughts at a given time, then there is a screening process. Screening process which is called intellect. Good thoughts, 
bad thoughts. So if your intellect is tilted towards spirituality, chances are your screening process is working at its optimum level and you are selecting the best thoughts and the rubbish thoughts you let it go. It is just like screening, you know. So people who do yoga, meditation, long walks, take care of, become a part of the nature, go to the beach, talk to the waves, look at the skies and beautify the formation of the clouds. So they become natural. In that process, your mind, thoughts, when they are going through the intellect, your intellect is screening the best thoughts and the functionality of the intellect is at its optimum level. All these saints, Mahatmas, gifted souls, people who do these things on a daily basis, their thought process screening is so fine-tuned that nothing goes inside. Nothing goes inside. It stays outside. So that is the function of the intellect. And then there is a an element called ego. Ego means I. <laughs> we all use I. Without I you cannot communicate. Whatever you want to write, whatever you want to say, you always say I. Right? My family, my office, my school, my college, uh, so on and so forth. And during our lifetime, we create a network of I-ness. They call it a network of I-ness. So we continue to put stamp of this I on everything which I am connected to. My relatives, they may be 500. My friends, it may be 1,000, you know. And if you are employee in a big corporation, all those people become your network of i -ness because you are using the word I. So the more we create the network of i -ness, it's a big kingdom. And we were discussing just a few minutes before that when we leave this planet, now you have to break this kingdom of highness, which you have created yourself. And it is very painful. It's very painful. The kingdom of highness means attachment. Attachment. Wherever we are abusing the word I, in some form or shape there is attachment. Otherwise we will not use word I. Like Russia. You don't know any Russian here, right? You have never been to that country. So that is not in your kingdom of highness. So you are not affected. You see certain news on TV and all that stuff. But that is not the issue. The issue is wherever I use the word I, what I am saying that I am attached to that in some form, remote form, subtle form, attachment could be very strong and attachment could be very mild. And in terms of spirituality, this kingdom of highness, attachment, this is the source of our suffering. This is the source of our suffering. So all these eight elements, if we understand how, how our body works, then chances are you will get it right. And to get it right is, don't attach yourself to the things because we come empty-handed and we go empty-handed. Everything stays here. The mightiest, the most beautiful, the most versatile, the richest, the poorest, all went 
apprehended and we are not the exception so it is my choice your choice individual choices how i should live in this world which is a temporary state it is a very temporary state if you leave this world and go to the space you are talking of light years each planet when you do the journey is light years away from each other so you know what is the definition of the light year what is light year distance yeah distance, distance. give me the definition distance traveled by light in a year so how, how much is that oh <laughs> Your mine hundred years, or your eighty years, or your ninety years, does it fit into in any percentage? No. No. Point zero 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 percent may be our life. So, in relation to the creational setup, we are just speck. Our stay on this planet is very temporary, but we think. and this is this is again a fallacy we all know but we continue to think that if we will stay for a longer period of time if that person dies it is his problem i am okay we go to the cremation right the guy who he who was my best friend he is in the coffin and i pay my tribute to him and deep down i think i am okay it is <laughs> he went away no the other day they will bring me there but we don't think that way so our attachment is the source of all suffering all sufferings so if during my lifetime when i am able when i am young when i have the resources when i have the energy when i have the wisdom when i have the time to practice if i start practice this art of non attachment non attachment doesn't mean throw away your car doesn't mean burn your house doesn't mean squander your money that is not non attachment non attachment is to develop and practice the art of detachment in attachment you know what i mean detachment in attachment that you have like let us say uh you have million dollar in your bank right so mentally this is called detachment mentally if i am thinking this is mine this is called attachment but if deep down you practice this thought this is not mine i am just a custodian like the bank is custodian of your money and you also think i am a custodian this belongs to somebody God gave me the opportunity to hold it for a while because कहते हैं हिंदी में माया आने जाने है right right that's what it means so you are holding for a while and then it will go away definitely it will go away either in your lifetime or after your lifetime it will go away so if I practice detachment through my thoughts drive a car. don't become a car use it but don't create the ownership so by doing these small things you are ahead of the game your mind is at peace your suffering is reduced to the minimum level so if i continue to practice this superior thought of detachment in attachment Don't throw away things. Just shift the thinking. Just shift the thinking. Or कुछ नहीं करना है. So if I practice that, you are ahead of the game, spiritually talking. So detachment is a beautiful spiritual flower which you should hold. Everybody should hold it. Enjoy the life. but let it go don't hold it it is not yours it is not yours it looks like 
I went to college, I went to school, I went to office, I worked very hard, and then I brought the money, and then I put the food on the table. Does not work that way. When you went to school, school was already there. You didn't make the school. When you went to college, college was already there. You just got the education. All the resources society has provided to you. When you go to office, somebody has already created the corporation. You didn't create the corporation. Right? So, all those social setups through which we earn money, those are not ours. So definitely whatever you earn out of it, it is not yours. It is for the use. And foolishly we don't use it. We misuse it. We abuse it. If I buy a ring of, let us say, $10,000, I don't use it. I put it in the locker. Once in a year on a social gathering, I wear it. Right? But if the ring is... $10 every day you wear. Every day you wear. So, by creating more possessions, you devoid yourself the use. You put it in a say, suppose you are wearing, I'll just give you the example, $50,000 necklace and you go to the social gathering in a party. What are you doing? You are more worried. First of all, you are concerned that people should ask you. Oh, you look beautiful. From Kansali, how much it is, right? If nobody asks you, you are very upset. So the people who are wearing $10 necklace, they are happy, they give a damn whether somebody asks or no asks. But if you are wearing $50,000, Whatever. It could be clothing, it could be a shoe, it could be something else. If people don't ask, you are not enjoying the party because through your thoughts you are upset because you are not getting the recognition. So this is called misuse. You spent so much money and you are, not, you are upset. And I didn't spend any money. I am wearing ten dollars ring. I am happy. I am enjoying the life. So this is how our thinking works. But if you are aware of that, that is wow, this is the trick. Then chances are you will stay away from costly possessions. Through somebody wrote that most of the things we buy through credit cards, right? And there is a beautiful uh, saying I want to share with you. They say, credit card is a money which is not yours. With this money, which is not yours, you buy those things which you don't need. To impress upon those people to whom you don't like. It's a paradox. It's a paradox. If I am your good friend, you don't want to impress me. You want to impress others to whom you don't like so that they should not criticize you or they should praise you. The people who are very near and dear to you, you don't want to impress them because you, they are their, your extension. They are your ref reflection. So this is how the mind plays the tricks. So, going back to attachment and detachment, do not create, this is the wisdom of spirituality and Bhagavad Gita, that don't create costly things. Costly things. Because it is a source of suffering. Then we say, uh, the life is miserable. Bacho ka bhi aisa hai, uska bhi aisa hai, iska bhi aisa hai. We continue to do all those things ourselves. And we are losing the peace which everybody wants. In the middle of the night, if you get up for whatever reason and this is the mode of your mind, you cannot go to sleep. You cannot go to sleep because the mind is agitated, excited. And who did that? We did that. 
Suppose you go to Macy's store. I give this example quite often. And there's a beautiful, what you call that, ladies' card, cardigan. And you ask the price, he says it is $100. And, but it's beautiful. And you don't want to pay $100. And you say, I will give $70. He said, no, that is not even my cost. I will take $80. And now the store was closing. It was uh, 9 o'clock and this bargain was going on. The storekeeper wanted to close the store. And you are bargaining that I will give you 70. He is asking, I will take 80. And he said, oh, no, ma'am, that's it. And the store is closed. Now you are going home. And you are still thinking, oh, damn it, I made a mistake, you know. It was so beautiful. What was the difference? It was only $10. I should have bought it. So now by thinking these things, you are going home. And after dinner, again the thought comes to you. I should have bought it. You know, what is wrong with me, you know? It was only a $10 thing. Now you go to bed. And if this thought is still there, the whole night will be spent on this bargain. Who did that? Who did that? He didn't do that. I did that. I didn't let it go. I was so attached to that thing. And if I say, there are millions of like that, you know, we will see it tomorrow. Then you will sleep like a baby. But chances are, we will not let it go. We, we, because we don't train ourselves on a daily basis, small things. This is the miracle of attachment. The moment anything you attach yourself, this is what happens. We don't We don't realize, but inside it is happening like that. It could be a person, it could be a thing, it could be a money, it could be a car, it could be a situation, it will be a talk even, that I said something to you, right? And it was bad. I criticize you publicly. And you go home. And night comes. And if it came to your mind that Kapoor Sahib said this thing. I never expected from Kapoor Sahib this thing. Your night is gone because you didn't let it go. You were attached to that thought. So spirituality dictates that become disciplined and that is what the screening process is. What thoughts you should hold and what thoughts you should let it go. And that function is the function of the Hindi, they call it buddhi. In English they call it intellect. So through intellectual process you have to screen your thoughts and you are the best person. You are the best friend to yourself. So do a favor to yourself. Don't hold bad thoughts, bad reactions. If you do that, you are a spiritual person. If you are not doing that, life is miserable. Life is miserable because it's a combination. It multiplies. So through attachment, we suffer. Through detachment, we enjoy. It is the same thing. You will not move things. Things will be the same. Car will be the same. If you are not attached to the car, you are enjoying. If you are attached to the car, every day from the window, you will see that it is still there. And if somebody just touch with the finger your car, it will hurt you. How come? But if you say it's a car, you know, he does it, is who, who cares, you know, I will, I will clean it. Because it is my use. It is only the thinking, how I think. 
So I become myself miserable by doing these small things and not doing these small things. It is my choice. So the more spiritual we are, the more better we are. Our choices are better. Things are same. House is same. Bedroom is same. Kitchen is same. But once you shift your thinking, you are enjoying. If you are attached, everything will hurt you. The other day I met somebody. I just asked casually, how are you? He said, Kapoor sir, I'm all right. I said, you look, you, you have some concern. He said, yeah, this morning, you know that newspaper guy? He, he used to deliver New York Times. Today he didn't deliver the New York Times, he put Newsday today. So I said, I said, news, news are news. You read the Newsday today. He said, no, I have so much attached for the last 20 years. Uh, I like Newsday. Uh, I, uh, I mean... Uh, and look at that. He's a grown-up person talking like a baby. And he was very upset that instead of New York Times, it was Newsday. Because attached. But if you think news are news, you are not the President of the United States. If you miss one news, who cares, you know? But people, I am just sharing with you, that people are attached to small things and they are suffering. Self-imposed suffering through attachment. And attachment has many forms, many manners, many shapes, many designs. But we don't understand that. We are attached to our food. People who are attached to, to their food and suffer, agar unki dish mein namak kaam hai, or he has been eating namak every for the last 10 years, to agar unki sabji mein namak kaam hai, that particular day, he will not enjoy the food because he is attached to the namak. Damn it, let it go. Sabji, enjoy the sabji. But he is attached to the taste. And the best food which is in front of him on the table, he will not enjoy it because he is attached to the salt. I just gave you an example, it could be anything. So we have to observe ourselves. If we want to diminish our suffering, it is no cost, cost effective, just the, through the awareness. Don't attach yourself. Let it go. Let it go. The more you let it go, the better you are, the better spiritual person you are. So attachment is the source of our suffering. Attachment to the, the main point why I'm I was discussing this notion of attachment because we are attached to our bodies. And today's subject is, we are not the bodies. We are living in the bodies. That is the dictation of chapter 2 of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. So, look at the way we live. 99% resources are spent on our body. The inner body which you are, which we are actually, we have no awareness. Only one percent. Sometime you get the message, either through Mahatmas or through reading some good books, that I am not the body, I am something else, I am something else. And I wrote it here, we are the soul and spirit, and we are the integral part of the Almighty. So if I am the integral part, suppose President Obama, he is very near, he is my relative, very close relative. What will be the state of my mind? Just think, whether I am working in New York, or I am in India, wherever I am, 
if he is very close friend of mine or if he is my cousin my state of mind is totally different but if bhagavad gita says you are the integral part of lord krishna i don't believe it and that is why i suffer if you are the friend of the king when there used to be kings and queens people who were friends with the king or queen they were living good lives they will boast i know that my this king is my cousin right because the state of mind changes so if i say that you we are the integral part of lord krishna do we believe that we don't believe that and that is why we suffer if i hold this thought the other day i also shared with you the lord krishna says that i am seated in the heart of everybody so everybody is divine it's a divine warranty i am not saying nobody else is saying it's lord krishna says that i am seated in the heart of everybody so everybody is divine but do we believe we don't believe that is the problem that is source of our suffering that you are royal but you think you are a beggar agar koi beggar hai but actually he is a very rich man what is his problem mental if you change his thinking he is damn he is very rich man but through some sort of illness he became psycho he has a mental problem so what is his problem actually he should go to the specialist who should treat his mind and then when he will be recovered he is a millionaire but if we don't do that he will be begging all his life saab ji kuch de do this is what we are doing this is what we are really doing i tell you think over it rewind the tape of your life we are doing like that we totally forgot we totally forgot and even if we know it we don't have the conviction we don't have the conviction so if i my lord krishna is my relative and he said look i am here what else i want but who has to bring that profound conviction usko kehte hain tap usko kehte hain meditation usko kehte hain yoga to hold this thought all the time practice it that he is here so as i gave you the example like amitabh bachchan his movies are he is a brilliant actor but suppose he is your cousin suppose he is your cousin then know what you will say you will say you will not stop saying throughout your life that amitabh bachchan is my cousin we say that but we don't say publicly or otherwise that lord krishna is my relative because we don't believe that we don't believe that but what will happen that is the beautiful connotation what will happen if i believe that that i am a very close relative of lord krishna because in bhagavad gita lord krishna says i am seated in the heart of everybody so he is very close to me right so if i profoundly believe that now and practice it through my meditation hold this thought all the time when i interact with people when i am eating sleeping walking talking doing office work whatever i do i my predominant thought is that lord krishna is my relative the quality of my work will change i will be qualitative i will be peaceful 
I will be laughing and talking and smiling. My will not have a wrong face. I will have a smiling face. But, and it is cost effective. I am not doing anything. I am just shifting my thinking. I am just reminding the beggar that, damn it, you are not a beggar. You are a rich man. You are a rich man. So, as long as the beggar is thinking he is a beggar, and you give him one dollar, two dollar, throughout his life he will be a beggar. Even if one day you give him thousand dollar, next day he is still begging, he will be still at the same spot that somebody else will give me thousand dollar today. Because yesterday was a good begging day, you know. It was sunny and somebody came and gave me thousand dollar. Chances are somebody else will come. So he will stay, he will not move that, okay, I got thousand dollar, now I should stop begging for a couple of weeks. No. He will be more in time tomorrow in the hope that somebody else will come and give me two thousand dollars. So he will stay back. This is what we are all doing at our own level. We totally forgot that we are royal. We are divine. We have all the abilities and resources, but we don't use it. We don't use it. That awareness comes in a very smallest fraction of the time. Then Lord Krishna is seated in my heart. If I hold this thought and practice, this is called meditation. This is the easiest meditation. You don't, don't do anything else. Otherwise, meditation according to the dictates of Patanjali Rishi, there are eight steps. Eight steps. And all those eight steps are arduous, difficult. You have to practice many, many years. One after the other. You cannot jump around that, okay, I will do step one and let me go to step six. No, it will not work. Yam, Niyam, Asan, Pranayam, Pratyahar, Dharana, Dhyan, Samadhi. These are the eight steps. And these are all scientific steps. I can share with you this whole wisdom. But I am giving you the best the so agar kehte hain ke 100 origins ka juice kisko ek glass mein de do that is better or those 100 oranges are better juice is better you didn't spend any time somebody serves you a glass of juice of 50 oranges it's very good for you but if I give you 50 oranges, you will eat only two or three and then you will put them on the counter. You will not eat 50. So this is what I am sharing with you, that this mantra of meditation, that Lord Krishna is always seated in my heart all the time, all the time. Is ke upar meditation ki jai. And never let it go, this thought. Never let it slip. Then my whole interaction with people will change. I have been stressing for the last two, three years since I am coming here that my eating habits will change. I will be very qualitative what I eat with this presumption that Lord Krishna is here. I will not eat garbage because garbage is garbage out. I will be very qualitative. What food should go? What is the food which Lord Krishna likes the best? Because he is here. So everything you will be doing for him. So <coughs> my eating habits will be qualitative. Qualitative. I will be very qualitative. I will be disciplined. What I talk to people. Do I hurt people? Do I do backbiting? Do I do gossip? Am I jealous? All these
these vices, all these bad things will disappear. Because I profoundly believe that Lord Krishna is here and He does not like these things. I am living for Him. And that is what this integral part is. Soul is the integral part. We are the integral part of Lord Krishna. So I have to develop that type of thinking. Once I develop that type of thinking, my whole interaction with the society will change. Aajkal Abdeko, I have been saying this more often, our homes have become a battlefield of misunderstanding. There's no pyar, there's no love. With kids, with wife, wife does not love, Husband, husband, they are not loving wives. They are just living. They are, they, they, there's no, there is no home. These are the houses made of bricks, putting carpets and bringing lavish things. But they, people are not living. <laughs> so that is a tragedy. There is no home. They are just houses. People are living together. But with this notion, you will see, wife will see divinity in the eyes of her husband and husband will see divinity in the eyes of his wife because Lord Krishna is seated and he likes this best, the best quality. We have been living together, husband and wife, 30 years, 40 years, and the love disappears. What happens? What happened to the first sight love? Who let that emotion go? We. I can bring it back. It was I who said, oh, first sight love, I saw you, I fell in love with you. When we did that, most of the people did that. But where that emotion is now? She is sitting in front of you, hours and hours, there is no talk. And if there is a talk, it is a misunderstanding, different talks. We are the spirituality, what we are looking for, that is what the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita is. Spirituality has to start from home. If my home is peaceful, first of all, I have to be peaceful. I must know the technique, the tools, the wisdom, how to practice peace. And peace can come only if I understand myself of this chemistry. That I am not the body. I am living in the body. So, life, I am the king and queen of our own lives. But we have to bring the profound conviction that it is like that. It is like that. It has to come from home. If I am, when I leave home and I am agitated and excited, wherever I will go, does not go, I go to temple, go to, if I am a teacher, if I am teaching to the students, and when I left home I was excited and agitated, I have no impact of education on the students. I will make them excited also. But if you are peaceful, then take your one foot out of your home. You are peaceful, dignified, with the awareness. Lord Krishna is here. I am, he is my best friend. You are walking differently. You are talking differently. Whatever your profession is, it will be 100% having complete impact on the audience. So, spirituality is not the abstract science. It's the practical wisdom. I have to do it. I have to reflect it. The person who says that I have been meditating, people these days say that I do a lot of meditation. But when you talk to them, a little thing will ignite them. The litmus test of meditation is peace. 
हजारों नदियां समुद्र में जाके गिरती हैं समुद्र को कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता दैट इज द मेडिटेशन दैट इज कॉल्ड मेडिटेशन एंड दैट मेडिटेशन मीन्स होल्डिंग द थॉट this thought i am sharing with you that, that i am the integral part of lord krishna wo mere bahut nazdeek ke relative hain jeeja ji hain brother in law hain my whatever relationship you want to say if you want to say my he is my son it's okay this ko aap pyar karte ho bring that that entity agar bachche ko pyar karte ho to make lord krishna your bachcha अगर आप फादर की रिस्पेक्ट करते हो मेक इम फादर मेक इम मदर वॉट एवर रिलेशनशिप बट कीप दिस अवेयरनेस अलाइव डोंट लुक लॉर्ड कृष्णा इन द टेम्पल ही इज नॉट देयर ही इज विद यू वी आर द मूविंग टेम्पल्स बट वी डोंट बिलीव वी बिकम मिजरेबल एंड दैट इज अ ह्यूमन ट्रेजिडी हाउ मेनी टाइम्स वी हैव टू कम ऑन दिस प्लेनेट through the process of reincarnation just to understand this the message is same the message is same the sooner i get it right my life i will be levitating i will be fearless we are living with lot of fear and worries aisa na ho jaye to aisa na ho jaye aisa na ho jaye to aisa na ho jaye what type of life we are leading let it go try this people who take lessons of swimming who know swimming up do you know swimming and what else not little bit swimming right so water is your friend or enemy most no you know you know swimming right. right i know swimming very well water is my friend does not matter whether it is a river or a pool or a ocean water is my friend but people who don't don't know swimming and you bring them to the edge of the water they are scared to death they are scared to death the same water and when you jump in the water right and as you will get what water does you don't do anything you jump and the water brings you up and if you don't know swimming you jump the same water will never bring you up and i didn't do anything i didn't do anything when i jump jump i i know that i know swimming but when i jumped in the water because i know i no swimming the water bring me up without of doing anything of myself the person who does not know how to swim if he or she jumps he or she does not have that facility and that is what that is what spirituality is i give you the example to make the point clear it's a very good illustration so once you perpetuate this thought again i am going back to that that lord krishna is seated in my heart and he is always there watching eating sleeping every activity is going through him so now your activity has to be screened quality has to develop it lord krishna is the quality control in a, in the corporate world whether wherever what are doesn't matter what we do there is a quality control department it has to go through that so if my activities daily activities khana peena sona talk everything is going through lord krishna he is the quality control can you believe that with that spirit thought my all actions will be qualitative and i will be at peace and the ultimate object of all human being is to attain peace because we are restless we are miserable we have made our life so difficult ourselves 
Nobody can blame anybody. Because we ourselves are not understanding the functionality of life. Life is simple. We are so expert to make it difficult. Expert, expertise of that. Everybody is so expert to make life difficult. But not doing the right things, the right way. And then we blame others. It does not work that way. Just change the thinking. So today's topic, again I am going back to this thing that we are not the bodies, we are living in the bodies. So if now I profoundly believe that I am not the body, then what I am doing? Now I am doing acting. Right? Jochi is a boy. Right? There is an actor there. Amitabh Bachchan, he does acting, right, of an old man. But he is a young man, but his role is an old man. So he does acting of an old man as long as he is on the stage. When that part is over, he goes behind the scene and becomes, he becomes Amitabh Bachchan, right? We are doing the same thing. We don't understand life. If I am not the body, so I am doing everything through body, which I am not, then it appears to be an acting. And Shakespeare said that world is a stage and everybody is an actor. So if I am an actor through this notion that I am not the body, but I am acting through the body, now I should act in the best way. Tabi meri movie chalegi. My movie will be doomed. So, how to act? Treat life like an acting, not reality. Because every when the actor is acting on the stage, when he goes behind the scene, he leaves everything. Whatever costumes he was wearing, he leaves it there behind the screen. And he goes home wearing his jeans and whatever shirt he was wearing. But we think we are not acting. We are the real people. No, we are also actors. But while acting, we start saying that this is my house, this is my car. We don't think that somebody through his own direction, he gave you the house, he gave you the car, he gave you the good job. But this is the acting. Do the best acting. But then you have to leave everything when the, when the acting is over. But we think whatever things have been provided to me during the process of this acting, they are mine. I never let it go. And that is the source of suffering. So Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, Lord Krishna says, we are not bodies, which means we are the actors. Act your day. Just think one day, select one day, select tomorrow is Monday, that I am acting. Look how relieved you are. Just think mentally. You will be doing exactly the same thing, but just bring the thought that Kapoor Samri Kata I am acting. So act. So acting means the best, right? So, if I am traveling, suppose I am in the train, right? I am also standing, I, I have a seat, an old lady comes, right? Since I am acting, I have to act good, so I will give a seat to that person, because it is a good acting. Otherwise, I, if I don't have that thought, I will be sitting, I will let her stand. But if I know I have to do good acting, then I will offer the seat, right? When I am walking the, I mean, block after block in Manhattan, if somebody comes and says, sir, give me something, I will give him one, because I have to act. This is, this is one act play. Somebody is asking you sir, to give me something. So I will give him one dollar or fifty cents, because I am acting. But if I ignore him, that is not a good acting. I, I let that part go. You get what? This is all. So, 
if monday tomorrow commit to yourself and remind yourself that i am not the real person i am just acting you are totally different person you are totally different person in the office where i am at my desk in my cubicle right and i have this idea that i am acting this is not mine i am just acting in the evening i will get up so you will do the best because that is the opportunity to act if somebody is making a film of my cubicle agar camera wahan laga diye jaye so i will be doing the best but i will be doing this exactly the same thing as i have been doing but now my thinking has changed so in our daily life whatever we do our relationship will totally change through this notion that i am not body i am living in the body i am acting my wife is my wife in the role of an acting after 30 40 50 80 years she will go and i will go the partners will change who knows what you will get but this is the acting so like amitabh bachchan what he is doing with the heroine of the picture if he is the hero he is giving the best although he has his wife the same notion the same notion in our homes we should develop this art that my kids i am acting i should provide the best to them i should be the hero they should follow me i should provide the best comfort to my wife because this is the picture somebody is taking the picture i should act best so with only this thought with only this thought i will become spiritual the quality of life may improve people in and around me will prosper they will be peaceful and that is how the spirituality works it is not confined to temples gurdwaras or churches or synagogues we are the moving temples we must understand our home is a temple bring that sanctity those sentimentality in your kitchen when you make the food make the food like an acting they show the food shows on the tv right what do they do they do the best they are showing you the best wow they don't give aaj bhi knife nahi mil raha ya galat kaat diya no they are doing the best because they are showing you the same way our lives are we are missing the point we don't think that way that this is a play i am talking to you right i am being photographed right you are safe because you are not being photographed i am being photographed right i have to be very careful what i say to you what the wisdom of bhagavad gita is and it is an acting it is an acting but the message is sincere subtle eternal sanatan perpetual forever never changes so through the wisdom of bhagavad gita start acting treat yourself the actor treat yourself a hero under the notion that i am not the body i am living in the body you will become fearless we are, we are so fearful either of yesterday or tomorrow we are we have lost the art the fine beautiful art of living in the present living in the present means acting ke jo scene chal raha hai stage ke upar right agar director told me if i am an actor hero and the part is kapoor sahab you have to cry and if i don't cry he will not approve my activity he i have to cry because he is the director is telling me to cry right because i am acting this scene demands that i should cry 
the same way treat yourself. You are the actor, you are the director. So bring this awareness, very strong awareness that I am acting. With that, with that, you will become fearless because you are in the present. Jo scene chal raha hai. Like here, now we are talking about Srinivas Bhagavad Gita, right? Physically you are here, mentally you are here or not, I don't know, right? If you are mentally not here, that is not good acting. You should also be acting. The scenes are like if somebody is sharing thoughts on Srimad Bhagavad Gita, you are a listener. So, what is acting kya hai? best? You have to listen. Right? Mentally, physically, you should be here. That is the best acting. If you have acting ke criteria, ho. the same is applicable to me. So, if we treat that, that is called living in the present. People who understand and appreciate this subtle art of living in the present, they are the best actors. Because scene acting. That's it. If you are driving, right? So driving may best acting kya hobi. I'm just asking. To drive carefully. Drive carefully. It is your responsibility to take care of others while taking care of yourself. That will be the best acting. But if I am not a good actor, then I will not obey the traffic rules. I totally will forget. So, these are small things. Bhagavad Gita is a class of awareness. So, become good actor. Good, the definition of good acting is stay in the present and whatever the part is go, going on, being played, become a part of that play. Become a part of that play. Looks weird because we have not been doing that way. But uh, thousand mile journey starts with one step. Let it be one step that from today, whatever the situation is, my predominant thought is, under the theory of, I am not body, I will be the best actor, whatever the situation is. If you are in the mandir, right? What is my best acting in the mandir, I am asking? To be prayerful. The deities are there, they are manifested. Somebody, facilitated for us it is there so I should be prayerful I should be aware Hanumanji you read many books but somebody took the time and trouble and made that deity so I should see Hanumanji I should not gossip I should not talk of food I should not be thinking that Swamiji ka pravajan kaam kaam khatam hoga, let me go and take the food. People start taking food, 15 minutes before they don't listen to Swamiji. <laughs> if the food will be served at 1 o'clock and Swamiji is talking and it is 12.45, nobody listens. The last 15 minutes of Swamiji, nobody listens. They are thinking of the food. That's the bad acting. So, Whatever I am sharing with you with utmost humility, it looks weird because we have not been doing that. We have to recondition the mind. Recondition the mind. And who can do it? You. Me. You. It is individual responsibility. Spirituality is a science of responsibility. Spirituality is a science of discipline. Spirituality is a it's a science of Inside out, it is cost effective. You don't have to attend any workshop, you don't have to buy any book, you don't have to pay anybody. Lord Krishna didn't charge anybody for, to Lord uh, to Arjuna, and he gave such a humongous gyan, it was free. Like these days, these are all petty workshops, and they are charging so much money. 
they are selling it like a business. Spirituality is not a business. It is free. It is God's message. It should be free and it must be free. But the main point is I have to do my homework. How many times from the rooftops Swamiji's and Masiya's and Lord Krishna, Lord Rama, Lord Hanuman, Jesus, Muhammad will cry, Oh man, don't do that. This is a better way. But we don't listen. We don't listen. So, under the concept of I am not body, I am living in the body of chapter 2nd of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, this is the practical wisdom coming out of it that this world is a stage and we are the actors. At any given time you are acting. Think of that way. Think of a movie. Think of a movie. Life is a movie. But here you are the actor and you are the director. You are the audience. Aapke movie aur koi nahi dekhta, aap khud dekhte ho. So, you are the judge, you are the jury, you are the defense, you are the prosecutor, which means act responsibly. Bring lot of responsibility, bring lot of discipline. What we eat, what we talk, how we walk, what we do, you know. We will be doing the same thing I am telling you. With this awareness, there is a lot of quality control. And the quality control of our lives is this notion that Lord Krishna is seated here, everything passing through that quality control. So bring that awareness. The chances are we will be better people, we will be more peaceful people. Once we are peaceful, we can make the society peaceful. You give the society only what you have. If you don't have something, you cannot give. So bring that awareness and start working. This is called puja. This is called meditation. This is called yoga. This is called tapasya. To hold these pure thoughts and then work on that on a consistent basis, on daily basis and small things. In chapter 12, Arjuna asked Lord Krishna, which form of worship is better, manifested or unmanifested? Sakar or Nirakar. And Lord Krishna said, people who hold these pure thoughts on a consistent basis, daily, they are very near and dear to me. This is called super statement of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. He is saying that such people are very near and dear to me who do these things on a consistent basis. So the commanding thought is consistency. Bring consistency, bring control, bring discipline and then you become a spiritual person. Time is over. How much? It depends on people, if you see, who get the gold medal in, in Olympics games, right? If, if the guy who is doing that uh, aerobics, the moment, or, or uh, cricket, take cricket, the fast baller, when he is running, and the batsman is there, when he is running from, let us say, 50 yards, just to pick up the speed, and he is holding the ball, and he know from which spot he has to release the ball. If he does not release, it is a no ball. Empire will not let him go, do that, right? So he has to let the ball go. So when he is running, right, and he is looking at the batman, and he is aware of the line also, where from where he has to release the ball. If he is attached to this process, chances are, chances are, it will not be a good ball. But if, this is what I mean, if he has the awareness 
Damn it, this is the acting. This is the acting now. I have to do the best before I release the ball. So he pick up the speed and the moment he comes near that line, he releases the ball in the right direction, right spot and boom, the wicket is gone. Right? So he is doing the same thing. But with this awareness that I am acting, you are not attached. If you are attached to that notion that I have to take this guy out, chances are you won't be able to do that. But if you are doing the best, chances are he will be out. And this is the practical wisdom of so many players that they don't think at that time. They release the bow with force and ferocity with this notion that this moment will never come again. So in offices also, suppose I get the assignment, you are my supervisor, you give the assignment, Kapoor sir, this is two hours, this is your assignment, I want the summary or the analysis after two hours, right? You gave me that. So now with that assignment, if attachment, if I attach to that thing, chances are, I am worried. I am. I have a fear in my mind. First of all, the moment I attach to something, the first thing comes the fear. If I two o'clock that man he was my boss will be angry, right? Right? But if I say, this is the best opportunity. He said, give me. So let me do the best. And now you are not attached. But if you are attached, if you are fearful, you are attached. In, in real life, whatever we do, if the element of fear is there in, in deep down in my soul, then that is called attachment. If I am fearless, fearless, eka fearful, eka fearless. When you are fearless, the performance is at peak. When you are fearful, the performance is compromised, diminished. And there are a lot of analysis I am not making up. There are a lot of research. When there is an element of fear in a performance, performance is not at optimum level. But when it is based on the fearlessness, fearlessness does not mean irresponsibility. Fearlessness means the optimum of the opportunity. It is only shifting, shifting of the way I think. So that is the answer to your question. Become, if the fear comes, then you are attached. If you are fearless, you are not attached. So all our performances in offices, I am also, I was also an employee at one time. If the fear is there, my performance is not at peak. That's it. Thank you. Yes. Certain limits we cannot do anything. We have to come across that. Whether some when I, when it comes to my kids, even if I don't like that, I have to do it. How can we come back? Overcome such such a. I miss the question. <laughs> We have to do something that it, we know that what I'm doing is right or wrong, right? Certain things we have to do it's for the kids or the family or, you know, for my in-laws and all. I know even if I don't like, I have to come across this. There it is saying merit or good merit, demerits and something like that. Pop or cool, you know, we know that we have to do this, but we have to do it again. It's for others. No, it is like this. You are taking a very small example what I am saying. It is applicable in every walk of life. First of all, become fearless. Become fearless. If there is a fear of any type in your mind, mind it could be husband, kids, relatives, whatever. If there is a fear... If I cannot overcome that fear, what can you do? That is what this class is. That is what this so class is. You, that that you have to think that you, it is not, the world is not running that you are here. 
if you go away right now, does it matter to anybody? What will continue? Right? Yes, yes. Am I right? Yes. So think that way. Sometimes we think if we go, my house will become like this, my husband will become like my children will become like that. No! Thousands and thousands have gone. Nothing has changed. Life goes on. Life goes on. Think that way. Think that way. That this is the divine opportunity and you are doing your best. But become fearless. If there is a fear, then deep down you are somewhere attached. And that should be taken care of. The litmus test of detachment is that you are fearless. And if you are attached, you are fearful. And through attachment with fear, whatever the judgments are, they are clouded. And it is a source of suffering. And it multiplies. It does not stop there. It's a vicious cycle, slippery road. Like the car skids, it skids, the life skids. So become fear fearless, you will be all right. Let it go. Let it go. Hum janani de de jizo ko. Situation ko janani de. Because we are so much attached with this that if I am not, this will happen. No, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. Life will continue. This is the beauty of life. <laughs> this is the beauty of life. It never stops. But foolishly we sometimes think if uh, I am not around, this will happen. No. Where are our parents? Where are your parents? Where are my parents? Where are my older relatives? They are all gone. Life is more better than when they were. So, if they come back, they will not understand life now. So, the, the, the idea is become fearless. Fearless does not mean hitting, hitting people. Fear does not mean that pushing people. Fearlessness means become stable and with this thought that life will continue. There will not be a break whether I am there or I am not there. But fear comes when we think if I go, these things will happen. No. You do your best, act, better, act in the best way. That I am the actor, I am the, I am the heroine of the movie. And do the best. That, that's it. Then, then the life is very... It will, you will start floating, swimming, you know. But the moment I don't let it go, in order to swim, in, in, even in the pool, I have to let go the whatever I am holding. I have to go in the center of the water to swim. I cannot swim sitting on the uh, stairs in the water, no. I have to leave. So we, we have to do all those things in our daily lives. And that is the practical wisdom of Bhagavad Gita. Become fearless. Anything else? Thank you.